Uh, Logan Kreska with Duke Energy, thank you for your time and what you're all doing to keep us safe. And I'm sure we'll be talking more in the next 24 hours. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Stay safe. 1218, the time we're continuing to track this track of Ian with our tag team of meteorologists there, Andrew Braven and Ted, Ted Faden standing by as we're taking a look right there wow. at our camera, just <laughs> shaking from the amount of winds. And Ian is not even made landfall yet. Guys, what are we seeing in terms of the track? Well, there's those winds shaking the camera. Already seen the wind gusts here in the Queen City. And we are right now counting down. I have the phone right next to us because I'm waiting to get the <laughs> alerts on, on when landfall happens. Looking like sometime this hour, if not at least probably within the next hour yeah definitely yeah i'd say by the time i'm taking five minute break to scarf down my lunch that's yeah. probably when we're gonna get the <laughs> notification from the national hurricane center that we do have an official landfall because it's happening essentially right now yeah we have those winds at 85 miles per hour it's moving north 14 miles per hour picking up speed this morning and landfall just about imminent so we do have the hurricane warnings the storm surge warnings in effect for charleston up through myrtle beach and the tropical storm warning still stretching up andrew up towards the queen city yeah and we're still, I, I still think we'll see some tropical storm force wind gusts. Charlotte East, once you get yeah. farther west of Uptown, though, winds aren't going to be as, as much of a factor. Not at all. Now, as this gets closer, we have the uh, rapid decreasing of intensity once it gets over land. It no longer has the water to support it, which it loses the fuel and quickly dissipates into a remnant low. But the moisture, I would say the damage is already done in terms yeah. of that moisture getting kicked up into the Carolinas. And we've been seeing these heavy downpours. Andrew, we have the dark red, the orange, the all over towards Charleston, even stretching up as that eye wall really kind of inches it closer and closer towards yeah. the coast. And Georgetown County actually was under a flash flood warning. So we'll see if, I'm not sure if they continue that or not, but they were under a flash flood warning because of some of the intense rainfall rates they've been dealing yeah. with. So as we have those heavy downpours, Charleston, that's going down towards Folly Beach. We've had a flash flood warning there as well. And of course, continuing to see with these high radar returns all the way up past I-26, very popular thoroughfare going down to Charleston, up through Cross, and even further, we have that rain to Myrtle Beach, even back towards Pauly's Island, where we had some impressive video of that storm surge not too long ago. And that brings that moisture all the way up into our area. Andrew. Yeah, exactly. And we're watching sort of the next wave, really when the intense rainfall rates, the winds picking up as well as you mm -hmm. get towards uh, Lancaster, Chesterfield counties. That's where we're really starting to see the heavy rainfall move back in, and this is going to be pushing off to the north and west. Also, once we get on the flip side up into the foothills and mountains, Jefferson, starting to see the rainfall move in for you and also for Boone. One thing we were talking about, though, with yeah. the shift eastward with the track, once you get past the foothills, especially the farther west you head through North Carolina, it's not going to be a major yeah. event here. More showery, maybe picking up an inch or so of rain. you got to get towards basically gas and Lincoln counties eastward to really start seeing those major tropical impacts from Ian. Here's an update on some of the strongest winds we've seen. Greenville gusting almost 40 miles an hour, yep. but there's Charleston now wind gusts to 60 miles an hour as that center is pushing its way on shore. The good news for them at least, they are on the offshore side, so yeah. all the winds are blowing offshore. The water level rise is going to be highest Myrtle Beach as you push up towards Wilmington, where you see yeah. all of that onshore flow. We Ten. were talking about a storm surge of upwards of six, seven feet. Six, seven feet was yeah. the highest, and that's right around Myrtle Beach, where the greatest concern is for that high storm surge. Back for us here, as we get towards the Central Carolinas, you can see that heavy rainfall really moving through as we head through the late afternoon and evening hours. That's when we're going to see the greatest impacts across the Piedmont, pushing up towards the foothills, but really the Piedmont, Sand Hills, that's where we're going to see the greatest impacts, the strongest wind gusts that we're going to see from this storm, Ted. And then you'll notice by 5 a.m. things are improving. I, I was going to say, by the time we wake up tomorrow morning, the main thing that's going to be sticking around from Ian, you're going to be feeling the breeziness and those wind gusts, mm -hmm. probably getting an idea of the debris field, too, because yeah. we have those wind gusts pick up, 55 mile per hour wind gusts overnight as the center of the storm continues and to really pass really going to be, and we were talking about this, really yeah. going to be focused eastern third of the viewing area. That's where I'm um, concerned, anticipating some power outages. Once you get west of Charlotte, it's not going to be a huge deal, especially Correct. in the wind gust department. It's really just going to be all rain. So just keep that in mind when we're talking about power outage concerns. It's all about east of Charlotte. Charlotte, uptown, eastward. Yep. That's where they're most concerned for the power outages. Rainfall, though, going to be pretty widespread across the region. Significant rainfall amounts, but again, heaviest rain across the eastern third of the viewing area. Today, the temperatures stay in the 50s, chilly, rainy, and windy. Hey, stay weather aware, though, because we are going to be even chilly heading into the weekend. Yeah, that's right. And the rainfall rates do start to come down as we get to your Saturday, but overall, dreary, gray weekend improvements on the way next week. We'll have another check coming up on the other side of this break.